Welcome to the Red Mage 50 to 80 Skills Guide. In this guide, we will cover all of your skills as you ver train, ver two, ver be, ver better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... ...to this. This guide is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV, or the MMO genre in general. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. We will, however, be crafting openers as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to be able to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. 50 for when you first get the job in A Realm Reborn, 60 for Heaven's Word, 70 for Stormblood, and then finally at level 80 for Shadowbringers. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, It'll make sense at 80. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. Let's begin. Obtaining Red Mage is simple. Provided you own the expansions, at level 50 you will be able to undertake the job quest to obtain Red Mage in Uldah at the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. It has no base class, so any battle class or job may pick this up. You must also complete your level 10 class quest from your starting guild and become certified to join other guilds, which is almost guaranteed to have been achieved just by normally playing the game. Upon becoming Red Mage, you have a large list of skills to begin with. To start, you have an entire set of mage roll actions. Be sure to find places for these with all of your Red Mage skills, and check the Mage DPS Role Actions Guide in the description if you need an in-depth look at these skills. Level 20 and Level 40, Maim and Mend 1 and 2. All these do are boost your output by 10% then 30%, and you won't notice them at all. Now, as for our actual skills, we have a lot to go over to start. The most important skill we have to go over is the base of the entire job. Level 1, Dual Cast. By casting any spell with a cast time, you will gain the buff Dual Cast. Because Swift Cast removes all cast times, using Swift Cast before using a spell will not grant you Dual Cast. However, strangely, if you use Swift Cast while you have Dual Cast, it will only use one of the buffs, like so. Anyway, normally using a spell will grant you Dual Cast for 15 seconds. Using any spell or weapon skill will expend the dual cast, even if there is no cast time to begin with. As such, the basic loop is as follows. Short cast time spell into a long cast time spell. You just about never want to cast a long cast time spell without first getting a dual cast. This is the fundamental building block you need to completely understand. Short cast, then long cast. Just be wary of any and all lag spikes. Dual cast does not play nice with lag at all. Even worse than with some other jobs and their abilities. Level 2, level 4, and level 10. Jolt, Ver Thunder, and Ver Arrow. Before I get into the skills, I emphasize once again, short cast, then long cast. Jolt is a short cast. Over Thunder and Ver Arrow are long casts. As such, we should lead with Jolt. Jolt is a 180 potency spell for 200 mana. It's all around basic, but it does give you 3 white mana and 3 black mana, which fills out our nifty little gauge with numbered meters for both mana colors. We'll get into this meter's use later, but note that the absolute max for each bar is 100 mana. Do not overcap if you can. Finishing a Jolt cast, we now have two options for our dual cast, Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow. Both cost 300 MP, do 310 potency of damage, 
and give us 11 mana of the related color. For Thunder is black mana, and for Arrow is white mana. Something to make note of now is balancing mana. You want to alternate what color of mana you're gaining. You lose no potency on your attacks for using both elements, and will actually gain some potency for keeping mana properly balanced. Proper balance is within 30 mana of each other, so you do have a lot of leeway. But be proactive in keeping mana balanced, especially because of the other effect I did not mention. Both Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow have a 50% chance of procking another skill. Procs that you are given 30 seconds to use. These skills are, respectively, level 26 and level 30, Ver Fire and Ver Stone. Both of these can only be executed when under the effect of Ver Fire and Ver Stone Ready, respectively. Those are the procs from Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow. Ver Fire and Ver Stone do 270 potency of damage at the cost of 200 MP, increase the mana of the respective color by 9, and consume the buff to make sure you can only use it once every time. What is notable is that these replace Jolt in your rotation. They are both short cast spells, so instead of Jolt into Ver Thunder into Ver Arrow, we will do Ver Fire or Ver Stone into Ver Thunder or Ver Arrow. Always replace Jolt with these spells where you can, and remember to keep balance. A Ver Fire into Ver Thunder is 20 black mana, so it's something to be wary of. On a final note, again, you have 30 seconds to use these procs, so for whatever reason you need to hold on to your procs, you have a ton of time to spare to use them. Now let's get into the AoE toolkit. Level 18, level 22, and level 15, for Thunder 2, for Arrow 2, and Scatter. Yes, that order does make sense, because for Thunder 2 and for Arrow 2 are our short cast AoE. Both do 100 potency of damage and give 7 mana of their respective color. These are AoE centered on the target and hit all enemies within 5 yalms of that initial target. The more targets there are, the stronger your AoE is. Start AoE at 3 or more enemies. 1 or 2, stick to single target attacks. But we also have Scatter, which is the long cast, which is why I have that listed last. We always want to do Ver Thunder 2 or Ver Arrow 2, and then do Scatter, which costs 400 MP to do a 120 potency hit to the target and all enemies within 5 yawns. Scatter additionally increases both mana gauges by 3. Thus, AoE is the reverse of single target. Do the elemental spells first, then do the unaspected general spell. And again, do AoE spells on three or more enemies. The more enemies, the better. Now let's talk about our off globals. Level 45, Flesh. On a short 25 second cooldown, Flesh does 440 potency to a target. Because of how Red Mage works, we want to weave this after a dual casted spell, but not between a short cast and a long cast. This is otherwise very simple. Throw this out every 25 seconds for a huge chunk of damage. Be sure to use this during AoE too. It's single target, but it's free damage on that target. Level 50, Acceleration. On a 55 second cooldown, you are given 20 seconds of guaranteed for fire and for stone procs. You get 3 stacks, so after 3 procs, the buff wears off. Simply enough, use this off cooldown to farm some procs, and use them immediately. Be careful not to overwrite any procs too. If you have a for fire ready proc, do not for thunder until you first for fire. This is a massive mana increase thanks to guaranteed procs. Further, this never does anything for your AoE, so don't bother using it in trash pools, unless it's one or two enemies only. Level 6 and level 40, Korakor and Displacement. These two skills are very complementary and will tie into our final set of skills. Korakor is on a 40 second cooldown and Nia instantly drags you up to a target and hits it for 130 potency. This should be used just about on cooldown, but be careful. Be sure you're not rushing headlong into an AoE. Then you'll be ver dead. 
and be careful with jumping out into a pit with Displacement. Displacement jumps us 15 yams backwards and does 130 potency to the target. It has a slightly shorter 35 second cooldown. There are many a joke about red mages jumping backwards into pits, so be very careful about this if there's no walls to the arena. But where you can, use this on cooldown too, especially when we tie it into the finale for our level 50 set. Level 1, level 35, and level 50, Repost, Zwesho, and Redoublement. All three of these are melee skills. You must be in melee range to use them as we use our rapier. I'm going to completely ignore these to talk about the enchanted versions, as the normal versions of the skills are completely worthless and should not be used. To use the enchanted versions, we need to gain black and white mana. Enchanted Repost costs 30 mana of each. Enchanted Zwisho costs 25 mana of each. And Enchanted Redoublement costs 25 mana each as well. In total, this is 80 black and white mana. As such, before we even worry about these skills, we want to build up to 80 mana of both colors. To start, these skills are a melee combo. You must use them in the order of Repost, Zwisho, and Redoublement. They are also counted as magical weapon skills, so they have no cast time, and additionally have a short global cooldown. Repost and Zwisho are 1.5 seconds, and Redoublement is 2.2 seconds, so it's a speedy action for our rotation. In order of the combo, the potencies are 210, 290, and 470 potency. That last potency should tell you how important it is to get the full combo out. It's a huge leap in potency. Now for where Korokor and Displacement come into play, when you hit 80-80 mana, we can use Korokor to get into range. Once in range, use a melee combo, then finish off with Displacement to create a gap while the Redoublement cooldown runs. Once you land, you can start casting again. All of this chains together into one big combo, which all leads into our initial opener. We're going to put all of this together to get at least to one full melee combo in our opener. Pre-pull, acceleration, and ver thunder slow cast. Then do the following. Ver arrow, ver stone, ver arrow, flesh, ver fire, ver thunder, coracor, ver stone, ver arrow, displacement, short cast, long cast, and then all of these empty shorts and long, which will change depending on proc rates, finally ending when we hit 80-80 mana, repost, zwisho, redoublement, and end with a swift cast. The start of the opener is very standard and understandable. We use Acceleration before the first cast to guarantee the next three long casts will give us procs. Then we start casting one of our long cast skills before the tank pulls. But this also assumes a tank who is going to give you a moment to start the cast. If your tank does a countdown timer, be sure to do the long cast. It's a good habit to get into for when you get the opportunity as this massively reduces the RNG in our procs and is extremely important in later openers. Either way, following within this rotation, we use Ver Thunder to start off on the right foot and use our dual cast on Ver Arrow, using two of our acceleration charges to start. Ultimately, it doesn't matter which of the two you cast first, but be sure to cast both. Similarly, Ver Stone into Ver Arrow, followed by Ver Fire into Ver Thunder, can be swapped around, but I will follow this order all the time. Either way, after the first one is our first flesh, and we'll get our third proc of acceleration spent for another Ver Stone. After the Ver Fire and Ver Thunder is spending our Core Core. This is the first Ver Thunder without acceleration procs, so we might not have gotten a proc out of it. We do have one last guaranteed proc to spend, 
So we spend the first stone into Ver Arrow and use Displacement to get that on cooldown. From here, everything is a mystery. We cannot assume any procs at any point. So from here, we will just alternate short casts and long casts, prioritizing procs if we get any, otherwise falling back to Jolt to get a short cast. Continue to farm up mana, alternating elements to stay even, and eventually hit 80-80 mana after a final set of casts. Immediately lead up into your melee when you do. We then weave in Swift Cast after the combo so we can get another free Ver Thunder or Ver Arrow. Choose based on what procs you do or do not have. Use the element that doesn't already have a proc. This also sets us up nicely for continuing our rotation beyond the opener, using stuff as it comes off cooldown. Some major key points to note, Red Mage is an extremely mobile job. You can run around a lot after every short cast. With proper usage of slide casting, moving before the cast ends but not so early that the cast doesn't go off, you get nearly three full seconds of movement between spells you need to stand still for. Make use of this to get into position, especially for getting into melee range to use your melee combo. In general, keep everything on cooldown. Use everything as it comes back up. There's little to no reason to hold on to anything, except maybe if the boss or enemies are about to die. Let me emphasize that the hard casted Ver Thunder before the pool is only because it's before pool. Never hard cast a long spell in any other circumstance. Mid fight, it's always a bad idea. Still be very careful not to core core into an AoE or off the map. That backflip is very big from displacement. And ultimately, no matter what, remember to always keep your mana balance. One to two points of difference is perfectly fine, and even a good thing. But if you're 20 points apart, better work towards fixing that, lest you lose out on a lot of damage by accidentally making the difference too big and going over 30. This will only be further exacerbated by our Heaven's Word skills. Level 52, Enchanted Moulinet. Much like the combo, the normal version is worthless. However, if we have 20 mana of both types or more, we can use Enchanted Moulinet. It's a shorter 1.5 second GCD and is our melee AoE. It does 200 potency to all enemies and an 8 Yom Cone in front of you. This is how we want to spend our mana bars during trash pools. And much like all AoE, the more enemies you hit, the better the skill becomes. So don't bother saving mana for bosses, and use your AoE whenever you can. It can be a huge amount of damage if the tank is pulling more and more enemies. Level 54, The Cure. Costing 500 MP, this heals the target for 350 potency. This does not exactly translate one-to-one -one for healer power, Vakir is very much a powerful heal. When solo, this basically makes you an invincible machine. In party content, be wary of spamming this. If your healer is truly struggling to keep everyone alive, or you make a mistake like standing in an AoE, you can Vakir to keep people alive. But keep in mind your healer is there to heal you. If you're missing a tiny bit of HP only, and your healer isn't fixing it, don't worry about it. A very common mistake players make is thinking they need to be at maximum HP at all times. If you're at half health, yeah, you need a heal. But your healer might be planning to do it with an off global that's about to come off cooldown in 10 seconds. Have some faith in your healer. However, your healer may do more than just struggle to heal and end up dying. In that case, you are now officially a backup healer. You have to cast a lot of heals to keep up with damage, especially AoE damage, but it's better than a wipe. Finding the balance when your healer is alive, though, is very much a tightrope act. But the key thing is to always trust the healer you get. If you're not dying because of them, and you're doing your part to stay in range of their AoE heals, you can stave off Vercure. There are, however, further caveats. 
If there are no enemies to be hitting, you can use Verkir freely, including to actually get the heal, but it can be used in more ways than just the heal. If there's been an interruption in the fight, such as the boss leaving the arena, you can use Verkir to prepare a dual cast immediately. This is especially useful if you don't have any procs available to spend. Avoiding Jolt where you can is extremely useful, even if this is a rare edge case scenario. Level 56, Contrasixt. On a 45 second cooldown, this does a 6 Yom AoE around the target for 400 potency. This is only slightly less potency than Flesh, but nearly double the cooldown. Prioritize using this as an AoE. 400 potency against many enemies, the power just explodes. But don't shy away from using it on single target too. The cooldown isn't that long, and you'll get multiple uses in a boss fight. Use it off cooldown anytime you can. Level 58, Embolden. This is a very important addition to our toolkit. On a 120 second recast, this boosts your magic power by 10%. Additionally, everyone within 15 yams will get a 10% boost to their physical power. Both effects last for 20 seconds, but get weaker every 4 seconds. To lay it out completely, for 4 seconds, the increase is 10%. The next 4 seconds, the increase is 8%. The 4 after, the increase is 6%. Another 4 seconds, the increase is 4%. And the final 4 seconds, the increase is 2%. Mid fight, use this on cooldown, especially if you can pair it with one of your burst phases with a melee combo, which, our next opener at level 60, is going to make it way easier to get burst phases. For now though, bosses, trash pulls, this is a really strong buff to get out in either situation. Just be sure to be near the party when you use it, because every physical person in the group is going to get a lot of use out of having Embolden. Level 60, Manification. This is one of two whole skills that is job quest locked. If you've not been doing job quests, get working on them and get this skill. This is one of the most important skills for your opener, and in general. Keep working on the quests up till 72. Anyway, on a 120 second cooldown, this doubles both your black mana and white mana up to the max of 100. It also resets the cooldown of core core and displacement immediately. Finally, the extremely important note of cancelling all combos upon execution. Take this situation. You have exactly 80-80 mana, an enchanted repost, costs 30-30 mana, and using it will bring us down to 50-50 mana. We could use Manification here to get right up to 100-100 mana, but this would cancel our combo, meaning we wasted that 30 mana. We don't use it like that at all. It's a mistake I've seen newbies do, so don't be one of them. How we do want to use it is when we're building up mana. Rather than needing to build up 80-80 mana to use our combo, we only need 40-40. Manification will give us the rest of the mana we need to use our melee combo. That's especially useful in our opener, but also it's useful in AoE. Where before you might have just used Enchanted Molinaise as you got the mana for it, you'll want to hold on to your mana to be able to use Manification. If you hold mana until 40-40, you can turn that 2 Molinés into 4 Molinés, thanks to Manification. If for whatever reason you find yourself at high mana levels when going into a trash pool, say a boss died before a melee phase, you can use a Moliné or two to bring you down to 40 or 50 mana, use Manification, and put you right back up to 80 to 100 mana. No matter which way you use it, get as much bonus mana as you can out of this. So let's actually get back to our opener. Our Heavensward toolkit was full of new skills, and a bunch of them are huge changes to our opener. Let's get through it and just see how much smoother everything becomes for Red Mage. Pre pool acceleration, for Thunder Slow Cast, and then do the following for Arrow, for Stone, 
Ver arrow. Flesh. Embolden. Ver fire. Ver thunder. Coracor. Contrisixt. Ver stone. Ver thunder. Magnification. Repost. Coracor. Zwisho. Redoublement. Displacement. Much, much smaller, huh? We've added an embolden into our flesh weave to prepare for our burst phase and to buff our allies in their burst phases. This is the position the most jobs in the game can make the most use out of embolden, with the most burst phases occurring after this moment. The second weave where we used Korakor has now added in Contrasixt for a double weave to get out the extra skill. And then things take a huge turn. After Contry Sixth, we are guaranteed to be in the following state. We have 31 31 mana exactly. We have a Verstone proc, and maybe, but only maybe, have a Verfire proc. From this state, we will use Verstone to hit 40 mana, then Ver Thunder to hit 42 black mana. We are now above 40 40, guaranteed no matter what happened. From here we can Manification which will bring us to 80 and 84 mana respectively to enter into a melee combo. After the first melee hit we can weave in our refreshed Korakor, finish our melee, and Displacement at the end. We didn't use a Displacement before Manification, but depending on your play experience you may not be able to get in range properly to fit it in either way. The only place available is after the very first Ver Arrow, and before the first Ver Stone, which is a difficult place to put it. Either way, the displacement at the end means we can't use the Swift Cast or Clip or GCD. Just do a normal set of casts after, and then do the Swift Cast. And on top of all of this, this preps us for later openers. This is ultimately the base of the opener we will be using up to level 80, so practice up on it while you can. Modification was the entire thing holding us back from having a consistent opener. Now that we have it, we can control our opener entirely and have this exact scenario happen every single time. Overall, this opener balances comfort, personal buffing, and party buffing all together while setting us up for similar openers at higher levels. We'll see how that progresses next in Stormblood. Level 62, Enhanced Jolt, and Jolt 2. Despite what it says, this does far more than just upgrade Jolt to Jolt 2. Jolt 2 is a much higher 280 potency, but we also get buffs to Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow to 370 potency, and for Fire and for Stone to 300 potency. Overall, it's just a lot of potency boosts to increase our power. Level 64, Veraze. Costing a whopping 2400 MP, this will bring back a fallen ally to life. And that 10 second cast time is not for show, be sure to only dual cast this. Or swift cast. Where Vercure, I warned you to be careful about overusing it, for Raze, I warn you about underusing it. If someone dies, you are the absolute quickest Razor in the game. Swift Cast is an equalizer, but your healers might have already used it trying to save the ally who died. You have Swift Cast anytime you want with Dual Cast. And generally, unless you're doing a lot of raising, Red Mage never has MP issues in normal play to the point that you can afford a lot of raising and still be attacking non-stop. Either way, Red Mage raises can make or break entire runs even more so than anything else you could possibly do. Especially if it's a tank or healer you are raising. Be fast, be proactive, and don't be afraid to use a raise ever. Level 66, Scatter Mastery and Impact. Scatter Mastery is here just to tell you that Scatter upgrades to Impact, which is all the same, but now it has 220 potency to all targets. Once again, simply a power boost. Level 68 and level 70, Ver Flare and Ver Holy. Normally I would go over these one at a time, especially since Ver Holy is our other job quest locked skill, 
but much like basically all of our main toolkit, these are the exact same skill, but one for black mana and one for white mana. To start, you can only use these skills after doing a full enchanted combo, finishing with enchanted redoublement. Upon landing redoublement, Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow will transform into their respective nukes. You can only use one of them as a finisher, and not both. Both of these are 600 potency at the cost of 400 mana, which are huge power potencies, and three very important effects. The first is you will gain 21 mana of the respective color, which is a lot of mana towards your next melee combo. Secondly, there is a 20% chance to gain a proc of Verfire or Ver Thunder. However, this can become a 100% chance. If your white mana is lower than your black mana and you use Ver Holy, you will guaranteed get the proc. Same for the reverse. Using Ver Flare with lower black mana than white mana guarantees the Verfire proc. As such, the 21 mana and the proc guaranteed make you want to always aim to use the lower mana count spell. Depending on how lucky you get with procs, you may end up not being able to get that free proc no matter what you do. You also have to immediately use one of these spells. Trying to use another spell first will instantly lose you the flare or holy, so pick one and stand by your choice but our opener should help you practice up on making sure you meet all the requirements to make the perfect use of either of these skills. Basically, all this does is extend our opener, so I'm not going to go through the full overview, just mention the changes at the end. Following the specific opener I've been showing off, we always will want to end with Verholy, because white mana will be completely empty when we finish off. We are guaranteed to have a Ver Stone after the Ver Holy, so we'll use this proc into a Ver Thunder, and just barely avoid a complete imbalance of mana. However, if we got lucky in the rest of our opener, we might already have a Ver Fire proc available, in which case we can replace this Ver Stone with that Ver Fire instead, to not waste another proc. But as you've certainly seen by now, to remain consistent and sometimes on very good runs with lots of procs, you can't help but waste procs. And in the worst case scenario like this opener follows, we only have the Verstone to use. So be ready to adjust where you can, but you might have no choice, which leads into the swift cast at the end. What we use a swift cast on once again depends entirely what came immediately before. We want to use a Ver Thunder or Ver Arrow all the time, but depending on what procs we have, we have to use one or the other. If we do not have a Ver Fire proc, we can put it on Ver Thunder to get one of those procs. If we have a Ver Fire, but don't have a Ver Stone, we can Ver Arrow to get a Ver Stone. Before, luck could mean we didn't have many procs, but now we might have multiple procs compared to back at level 50. By now you've seen what Red Mage is capable of, and how to properly flex your rotation to use and save procs as needed to get to 80-80 mana. But now you want to actively try and keep a 1-2 mana imbalance to make the most use out of Verholy and Verflayer. From here though, we get some nice quality of life and power in Shadowbringers. Level 72, Enhanced Displacement and Engagement. First off, the trait boosts the displacement's power to 200, further incentivizing us to use it whenever we can. However, we have another option now. Engagement is on the same cooldown as displacement. If you use one, they both go on cooldown. Engagement is a weaker 150 potency and still must be done in melee range as the trade-off to not be flung 15 yams backwards. My first reaction to this skill may be the same as yours, that it is bad, but honestly it's a lot better than you expect. Other than how we shall use it in the opener, there's a lot of reasons to use engagement and stay close to the boss. Mechanics, heals, and the edge of the arena causing you to die are all good reasons to engagement instead of displacement. Where you still can safely displacement to no punishment, go right ahead, but now we have a much much safer option for the situations you could get in trouble for. Level 74, Enhanced Manification. 
This trait does double duty. The cooldown of Manification is reduced by 10 seconds, but we also get an extra buff on top of it. For 10 seconds, our magic damage will do 5% more, which will last for the entire melee phase we do. All the same uses apply, but now our burst phases just got a bit burstier. Level 76, Enchanted Reprise. Once again, the normal version is worthless. However, Enchanted Reprise is a 300 potency hit for 5 black and white mana and has a slightly lower global recast time. Let's set a few things straight. This is a weak option, but it's also a good option. A contradiction? But let's keep this in mind. Movement. By now you most certainly should have gotten into situations where dual cast and swift cast are not enough to keep you DPSing constantly. You'll have had to stop attacking just to move where you need to go. Or die because you stopped moving. This is the solution to that situation. A weak skill is preferable to no damage at all, which is also why it costs so little mana to use, only costing 5 each. If nothing else, this just further emphasizes your want to stay in melee range at all times, for a wide variety of reasons. Level 78, Enhanced Contra 6. Uh, once again, a trait that does double duty. Contra 6 recast has been reduced by 10 seconds, and both for Thunder 2 and for Arrow 2 have been boosted to 120 potency each. And since we use Contra 6 in both single target and AoE, this isn't just a nice AoE booster, it helps a little bit in single target. Level 80, Scorch. Scorch is our finisher on top of our finisher. By that, I mean it costs 400 mana and can only be used after Verholy or Verflayer. This will do a massive 700 potency in increase, both mana gauges by 7. Similar to Holy and Flayer, replacing Arrow and Thunder, Scorch replaces Jolt 2 and must immediately be cast before using any other spells, lest you lose it completely. There's absolutely no reason not to go through your whole combo at once though. But we went from a 3 hit combo, to 4 hit combo, and now finished with a full 5 hit combo of skills. But that puts us nicely in a spot to go into our final opener. Two new skills fully round out what we've been doing since level 60 but the additions will feel natural, and not all that much different. Pre-pull, acceleration, for Thunder slow cast, and then do the following. Ver arrow, ver stone, ver arrow, flesh, embolden, ver fire, ver thunder, coracore, country sixth, ver stone, for Thunder, Engagement, Manification, Repost, Core Core, Zwisho, Redoublement, Displacement, For Holy, Scorch, For Stone, For Thunder, Flesh, Swift Cast. The first change is right before our melee combo. In the weave where we use Manification, we will first use Engagement for the free damage, where we couldn't really fit in Displacement before. The second change is the obvious one. We want to use Scorch. This Scorch lengthens our opener just enough for the final change. Flesh comes off cooldown just early enough for us to double weave it in with the Swift Cast at the end, which will still use the Swift Cast in the same way as before. That is to say, on Ver Thunder or Ver Arrow, based on what proc we do not have. But overall, the toolkit we got out of Shadowbringers didn't change all that much. Some nice quality of life and big flashy nukes, but what we learned before has only barely been built on. Don't stop practicing, look deeper into how to properly manage Red Mage, and Ver be the Ver very Ver best you can. Thank you for watching my Red Mage 50 to 80 skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. My goal is to help players improve in whatever ways I can.
Take care, and have fun in your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of Ananidhogs lay waste to your enemies.